I'm going to start by sharing a file tune that I made. I'm going to as we go along. So last week we learned about the water and carbon cycles. What do you remember? You can see here atmosphere and that plants take in synthesis of water and, and plants are eaten by animals. The nitrogen goes, in, sorry, the carbon goes into the animals and animals and plants when they die, their waste, uh, their dead plants, dead animals, that all goes into the soil. Some of the carbon um, when they decompose will go into the air. Um, over millions of years, if that carbon is trapped underneath the earth, it can, under heat and pressure, change into coal or petroleum. And if we burn that, then uh, that carbon returns to the atmosphere. That's one of the things that has caused global warming is all the burning of fossil fuels. So today's objective is to develop a model to describe the cycling of matter and flow of energy among living and non-living parts of an ecosystem. We're going to do that with the nitrogen cycle. We're also going to learn about water pollution, the effects of water pollution, and preserving our water resources. So here we have the nitrogen cycle. You should be able to, after today's lesson, be able to recreate a model like this. So you see nitrogen is special in the atmosphere because it's in a form in two. That means that it has two nitrogen atoms. Those two nitrogen atoms cannot go directly into plants or animals. They have to be fixed into the soil first by nitrogen fixing bacteria that are found in the root nodules of some plants called legumes. So the, the nitrogen gets into these nodules and then it gets into the plants and then the plants have assimilated that nitrogen in a form that then can be used by living things to make proteins and nucleic acids, including DNA and RNA. And then the animals can eat the plants and that then passes on to the animals so that they can also make proteins and nucleic acids. Now when plants and animals decompose, that nitrogen will return to the soil and in order for that nitrogen to get back into the atmosphere, there's a type of bacteria called denitrifying bacteria that will return the, uh, will change the nitrates in O3 back into a form for the gaseous form uh, in two. So one of the problems with nitrogen is that when we don't have enough of it in the soil or for the same, in the same case for phosphorus, we want to add fertilizers to the soil to help our plants to grow because plants are important for our livelihood. We use crops um, and we consume crops as part of our daily diets. So if too much nitrogen gets in, the so it runs off in from the soil with the runoff from the rainwater, it can end up in streams, lakes, ponds, and even the oceans. And if that accumulates, it can cause algae blooms, which can lead to dead zones where there's no oxygen in the water. And that of course will cause massive fish kills. Dead zones are areas without any oxygen, as I said, and they're produced when the mats of the algae block out sunlight to pho photosynthetic organisms. You've heard probably about the red tides off the coast of Florida. Those are due to the algae blooms, excuse me, or those are algae blooms. The green in the water, that's due to an algae bloom. Sometimes they have a reddish brown color. 
So the effects of this, as you probably can guess, our tourist industries and our fishing industries have suffered. We can prevent this if we uh, work with farmers, ranchers, gardeners, and pet owners to take care not to apply too much fertilizer and to control the runoff of feces with rainwater because feces is also contains uh, nitrogen and phosphorus. So those things that are found in fertilizers are also found in feces and if they get carried to bodies of water by rainwater, they can cause the algae blooms. Um, algae reproduce in large numbers when these nutrients are avail available. This is called an algae bloom. Question one, how does nitrogen get from the air to the plants? You need to answer these questions on a separate sheet of paper. And you're gonna submit these. Assessment two. Question two, how does nitrogen get from plants to animals? Write the question, write your response for number two. Question three, how does nitrogen get from plants and animals into the soil? has to do with decaying, but I want you to use the other word for this one. Another D word. Question four. How can we prevent nitrogen from getting into water? You might have to think about this one. Question five, what happens to algae if too many nutrients get into the water? Use that two word term. First word starts with an A, second word starts with a B. Think of a flower. Question six, what happens to water's oxygen level during an algae bloom? And what happened, and what does this lead to? What happens to water's oxygen level during an algae bloom and to what does this lead? Think of those fishies. Question seven, what are some important reasons to keep water nutrient levels balanced? Why do we wanna keep the nutrient level in the water balanced? Thank you. So please submit your assignment, questions and answers on a sheet of paper. And then, well, I say a sheet of paper, you know what I mean, a Google Doc. Um, and then um, also make sure that your questions um, are one color and your answers are another color, just so it's easier for me to read and I think that's all I'm going to assign you for this week. Thank you for joining me.